Hello everyone and uh, welcome back. What we're going to be working on now is basically the same thing that we did in our last tutorial series where we had exported the model as a grayscale model and then applied all those materials within Stingray. So that is a wonderful method especially when you're first getting started because it really gives you the ground uh, understanding of what is happening behind the scenes. Um, however, once you kind of get to the point where you know that stuff, and let's say you're building out a library of models, like this, this record player is actually a perfect example because I'd like to use this model in multiple projects. Um, and I don't want to have to set up that RMA material every time, and I don't want to, you know, um, do all that work every single time. So, um, especially if this is going to be used in multiple projects, like this record player might be. Um, it's a pretty nice asset. It can be used anywhere. Um, I can use this in, in multitudes of projects. Um, so, so for this, you know, this type of a model, I might want to put this in my library and keep it around so that I, I can use it over and over and over again. But when I, when I import it into uh, Stingray, I don't want to have to do all that work of importing the textures and a applying them and attaching them to my, um, my mesh and then creating the RMA material and then moving all the materials into place. It's like a lot of extra work. Um, so what I might want to do is just do it once. Uh, and I would want to do that all in Maya. And that's what we're going to do here, is we're going to set up this, this exact same thing. We're going to do exactly the same model, but we're going to do all the work right here in Maya, down to the shader effects. We're going to connect all the, all, everything. It's going, to be, it's going to be ready to go. Okay, so um, what I would like to do is, first of all, just show you how seamless the import is. Okay, so what I've got here is the model. Um, and this has already got all the work done to it. So I've already created the shader effects uh, files and um, it's, all, it's all ready to rock. So all I have to do now is export it. So I wanted to show you that so you can see just how easy it is to go, you know, like to, to put this effort in up front really pays off on the back end. And I want you to see how much of a payoff it really is. So here we have the entire model, all the textures, everything set. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go file. Uh, game exporter, and I'm going to export this out so I can import it into Stingray, okay? And here we have the record player start, the record player play, and the record player stop animations. They're all set and ready to go. Um, same as we did in the other project, uh, we have our, um, our you know, file name and the path is set. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit export, and I didn't actually select anything, so I have to actually select my model. So I'm going to select it. Um, that's actually a choice. I could have just set this to export all, but I usually do it to export selection um, just to make sure that I get exactly what I want. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and hit export. Okay, export. Do I want to replace it? Yes, I want to replace it. Okay, the export is successful. Everything is done here. So now let's jump into Stingray and let's go ahead and go import. So I'm in my content models and I created this folder called, um, uh, you know, record player with materials. So here we have the, the record player from before. And we can take a look at that and we can see that there it is. Okay. And we can also create another folder that is record player with materials. So I'm going to go ahead and import this over the top so that we don't overwrite the other work. I just want to show you how easily this works out and um, how it, it uses the exact same, you know, basically everything will be the same. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and hit import and I'm going to go to my uh, record player folder, record player cabinet, game ready. And I'm going to grab this record player with materials. Okay, so open. And I do want to import the animations this time. So I'm going to go ahead and hit import. And we're going to see that we're going to get everything we need all imported all at once. Okay, so here it comes. And there we have it. So here is our record player with materials. Um, and you know, there's there there it is. It's it's basically complete. Okay, so in one shot, we just got the entire thing imported in one go. So that can be really convenient. Obviously, um, you know, it, it just makes it a lot easier to get this across. Um, and you know, that was that was seamless, right? And it even came in with our animations, so all of our animations play. And you know, here's the record player start. And here's the record player stop. So complete with animations, we have everything imported properly. So that can be really, you know, that, that's obviously useful, right? That's, that's a really nice feature. All right, so, um, so how do we do all this? Like, 
how do we get started, right? So let's let's start with a blank slate, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take the entire model and I'm just gonna put um, under the shading panel, I'm gonna go ahead and put just the standard material on it, okay? Um, and that will give us this Fong 2 and now it's just a blank slate and we can start from there, okay? So I'm gonna now um, just jump into the, uh, the materials panel and all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go edit, delete unused, okay? So delete unused, and now all my materials are gone, okay? So now this is basically where you would be with your model. Um, this might be called Fong 1. It really isn't gonna make a difference. Um, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna start to apply our materials and we're gonna move forward, okay? So uh, so to begin, let's grab just the base of the, of the record player and let's put this PBS shader on there, okay? And we're gonna grab it and go PBS shader. And we're gonna call this, um, record player underscore material, okay? And we're gonna grab the record and we're gonna make this, uh, and we're gonna put the PBS shader on it and we're gonna call this record, record material, okay? So now we've got the record material and the record player material, okay? So now we're pretty much set to go. Um, and I wanna grab uh, these parts which I want to have the same as the record player, right? So right now this is record player, but this one's still set to Fong 2 and this one's set to Fong 2. Now, if I were to go ahead and hit PBS shader on this guy, it would have a new name, okay? And it would not be the same as using the one that's under it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up my materials panel and I'm just gonna kind of minimize this size a little bit so that I can see what I'm doing. And I'm gonna grab my turntable part and I'm gonna go record player material and I'm right clicking and then I'm gonna say assign material to selection, okay? And I'm gonna do the same thing here and I'm gonna go right click, assign material to selection, okay? So now all the parts that I want to have using that record player material now have that record player material, okay? So this way I don't have any conflicts and I don't end up with materials I don't want, okay? I'm just gonna go ahead and go edit, delete unused nodes and now that that Fong 2 is gone, I know that I've applied materials, either the record material or the record player material to everything in my scene, okay? Okay, Fong 1 will never go away. That is always there, okay? So, um, but that's really ne neither here nor there. All we really wanna make sure of is that our record has the proper material name, the turntable part has its proper material name, the head has its proper material name, and the base has its proper material name, okay? So now we have everything the way we want it, and everything should be good to go. So now what we wanna do is start working on the actual shader, okay? So the first thing we'll do is we'll select the base, it really could be any part, we don't care. Um, we'll just grab the base to begin with, and we're gonna go ahead and tab into this record player material uh, tab, and we're gonna go ahead and say make unique, okay? So that's the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do. And the second thing we're gonna to wanna to do is go to our record and do the same thing, so make unique. Okay. And now we'll no longer use the parent material for anything. Okay. Otherwise we could have problems when we export. So we always want to make sure that we do that make unique uh, thing. So this now is its own unique texture and we can edit it how we want. All right. So let's jump into um, the shader effects tab. But actually before we do that, I just want to show you that um, even without hitting make unique, we already had all these things here. So if we wanted to just go ahead and put, you know, a color map, a normal map, a roughness map, etc., we could have just done that right from here. We didn't have to do anything further, okay? We didn't even have to hit make unique. In fact, you shouldn't hit make unique if you're just gonna use exactly this setting. Um, and this is exactly the same as what we use in Stingray. So um, anything you apply here will come directly across in Stingray. No issues, no problems, no muss, no fuss. Easy peasy. Um, However, we're gonna take it a step further and we're gonna make our own shader graph. Hence the reason we hit the Make Unique button. Um, so just so you're aware, you can use this uh, setup right out of the box. As soon as you hit this PBS, it's giving you the Stingray PBS shader. You can put all your textures in here and send it right over to Stingray, no sweat. Okay, but like I said, we're gonna take it a step further. So we hit that Make Unique button and now we're gonna jump into Shader Effects. And the first thing we're gonna notice is that we've got this crazy graph, right? Um, and it's kind of, you know, kind of crazy. It's the one that's the standard one. And again, this isn't the most efficient, um, but it is very useful. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is start with a blank slate and we're just gonna select everything and we're gonna delete it and we're gonna start over, okay? So now we're gonna make our own custom graph. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go add, uh, 
and we're going to go vertex inputs and text chord zero. We're going to go add uh, sampling, sample texture, and we're just going to move that up here. And we're going to copy that four times. So control C and we're going to go paste, paste, paste. So we have one, two, and three. Okay, so now we have four uh, materials ready to rock. And the reason we did that was because we know that we're going to need our color map, our normal map, our RMA material, and our um, uh, emissive channel. Okay, so let's go ahead and now connect this. So we're going to go RG to the UV, and we're going to go RG to the UV, we're going to go RG to the UV, RG to the UV. So now we have all of these ready to go. Um, they're now reading from the proper text coordinate, which again is our UV channels. Okay, so um, now we're going to want to grab our texture map and change it from texture map 691 whatever uh, to color. A lot more legible. And we're going to do the same thing with our normals. So normal. And we're going to go to this one here. And we're going to go ahead and set this to uh, normal. And we're going to call this one RMA. And the last one is going to be our um, RMA and emissive. OK, so there we have it. Now, um, we can go ahead and start connecting these. So let's go from RGB to base color. And notice that it says XYZ. Well, we don't really want to use XYZ. We want to change that swizzle, okay? So that's what this is called. If we select the standard base and then select base color, we can change this swizzle to RGB, okay? And we can do the same thing for our normal. So we're going to go normal, and it's going to say XYZ. We're going to change that to RGB. And we're going to grab our RMA, and we're going to go to roughness, and we're going to go to metallic and we're going to go to ambient occlusion and we're going to go R. Oops, I'm sorry. Uh, roughness gets the R. So R. And we're going to change this metallic to G. And we're going to change this ambient occlusion to B. Okay, so all we have left is the emissive channel. So let's go ahead and get that done. So let's go add math multiply and we're going to plug our RGBA into this uh, bottom value and we're going to go add input material variable and we're going to connect that result into here but you'll notice that when we do so it's going to give us this error okay that's because it didn't automatically select a type okay so just go ahead and go here and say scalar so that we have our proper scalar value and we're going to multiply that okay so now we have that set and now once you have this result and it's a proper color you can plug that into your emissive channel okay so let's go ahead and grab emissive and let's uh, grab the swizzle and go rgb okay so now we have all of our materials kind of set up properly here okay so everything is set and we're pretty much good to go so all we have to do now is uh, save this okay so and we want to call this material variable we're going to call it emissive uh, adjust okay and we want to set that max slider value to 20 so that we have a little more range so we can overdrive our multiply and the last thing we're going to have to do is just make sure our uh, normal is set to the encoding of normal, okay? I always forget to do that, so we want to make sure that that gets done. Uh, if you don't set this encoding to normal, you'll end up with issues with your normal maps. And we are set, okay? This, this material is good to go. So let's go ahead and grab our normal and select it and grab the material. So it's going to be record player normal. And we're going to go ahead and grab our record player base color and we're going to grab our record player RMA and we're going to grab our emissive record player emissive record player emissive okay so now we should see that we have our ability to adjust our color so we're all good to go so this is pretty much set okay so now we just need to do our record oh and I want you to notice that when we did that, it also got our record player base, it got our uh, head, it got anything with that material. So and that's why you want to make sure you're always using the same material for everything. Like if we had done this as a separate material, we'd have to do this whole process again and it would be kind of wasteful. So we don't want to do that. We want to make sure that you know everything is using the proper um, 
you know, proper material names. Uh, this way, you know, we're really only using one material for everything um, here, except for the record. The record is a different material, okay? So now what we want to do is set this one up so that it's using the same shader graph, but we don't want to build that whole shader graph over again. So what we're going to do is we're going to go open shader graph, and we're going to go file, import graph, and we're going to grab our RMA EM3, okay? And we're going to go grab. And there we have it. This one's all set to go too. Okay, so super easy. I'm going to close that window. We're going to select our normal. This is going to be record normal. And we can select our record again, grab our color, record color, select the record again, select RMA, and select the emissive. Okay, so that should do it. And if I'm correct, everything is set. Yeah, everything is set. Okay, so now all we have to do is export this model and we should be good to go. All right, so let's go ahead and select everything. We're gonna go File and Game Exporter. Okay, and we're gonna go ahead and export. Now I'm gonna name this again something different. So I'm gonna go record player with materials two and I'm gonna export it, okay? Just so that we have another uh, copy of it so that you can see that all the changes that we did here are not the ones we did before. So I just want you to know that everything works properly, okay? So there we have it, everything is set and we're just gonna go ahead and hit save. Uh, I wanna actually save this scene as something different. So I'm gonna call this redo. RMA final uh, re, redo. Okay, so now it's saved out as something different. And now I just have to go into Stingray, go ahead and right click, create folder, record player with materials two. So I've got my second folder now, and I'm gonna go ahead and hit import. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab my record player with materials two file that I just exported. And I'm gonna hit open and I'm gonna go import. And everything should come across perfectly. Now notice that it's just gonna do a little compiling. And once that compile is complete, we should see that everything is set. So let's check it out. And there we have it. Everything looks good, all right? So that's really it.